All right. So in the last video, we added uh, better feedback to our checkpoint so that it uh, changed its size and how quickly it rotates and its color. Uh, but in this video, I want to introduce one more feedback item, and that's sound, so that when we activate the checkpoint, uh, some sort of sound effect plays. And this will be a, a strategy we can use not just for checkpoints, but for anything that we want to add a sound, a sound effect to. So it should be pretty useful. So first of all, uh, go ahead and stop the game, and there's a website I want to go to in order to find some sound effects, or actually make some sound effects. Uh, this website is called bfxr.net, and it's actually a... Um, it's like an online synthesizer, and if you have Flash installed, you can mess with it right in the web browser. If you don't, you can click here to download it for whatever operating system you're on, and then you're just going to want to uh, extract it, and uh, there'll be an exe inside you can double click. So we'll just click show in folder here, and uh, here's the exe. I'll go ahead and extract it. Inside of here, we have the bfxr.exe. All right, so once this loads, uh, it has a pretty complicated seeming interface and if you're familiar with synthesizers at all maybe some of these words will make sense to you if not luckily you don't really need to understand it too well you can just click some of these preset uh, buttons here and it'll sort of give you a randomized guess at what that sort of sound effect should sound like so in this case I want something for the checkpoint so I'm going to I'm going to look at maybe either um, how about pick up? That seems reasonable. Or how about power up? This sounds good. So each time you click it, it will give you a different, uh, a different iteration of the sound. And so you can just keep clicking it until you found, find one that you are happy with, one that seems like a checkpoint sound. So I've, I've found this one. I like it because it's really short, and the shorter, faster sounds are typically less annoying for the player. Uh, once you find one you like, if you want it and you understand what these uh, sliders do, you can play around with them. Otherwise, you're ready to export it as a wave. So you're going to want to click the Save Wave to Disk here, and just choose a spot um, that you'll be able to find easily. So I'll just go ahead and save it to my desktop. And um, by default, it's going to say power up 11 because this is the 11th time I've generated a power up sound. But I'm going to go ahead and, and rename it to um, checkpoint, I guess, checkpoint sound. And uh, make sure you keep the .wave file extension at the end. And we'll just save it to the desktop because that's easy for me to find. Oh, there's already one there because I was doing this earlier. That's fine, I'll go ahead and replace it. You probably won't already have a checkpoint sound uh, on your desktop. So now I can go ahead and close BFXR uh, and let's let's go to Unity and make sure we're sort of ready for importing this sound effect. So I'm going to click in the project window on my assets folder here and I'm going to make a new folder because this is a new category of asset that I want to introduce to my project. It will be called uh, Sound Effects. And I'll open this up. And I'm going to right click. Well, actually, let's just open a Windows File Explorer window and uh, go to our desktop. And this is where you should find uh, your checkpoint sound, or go to wherever you saved it and just drag it into your sound effects folder you just created in uh, your Unity project. So we'll just do something like this. And when I let go, you'll see that it is now in my sound effects folder in Unity. 
Um, I'll play it in Unity. If you select it, you'll see a little waveform in the bottom right of the inspector. You can hit play. It should sound familiar, and um, and so we can see it's it's basically working. All right, so now we need to get this sound effect to play when the player enters our checkpoint. So I'm going to select my checkpoint game object in the hierarchy here. Remember that it's actually a prefab, and that's going to be useful so that I only have to set it up once, uh, and then I can propagate those changes out to all of the other checkpoints in my game. And then all the new checkpoints will also be set up the same way. So um, I'm going to select my checkpoint. Any of them is fine. And I'm going to go to Add Component over here, and I'm going to look for Audio, and I'm going to find Audio Source and I'll add an audio source component here. You'll see all of the audio source properties have come in in bold because this is a component that is not on the base prefab. So eventually, once I have this set up properly, I'm going to want to apply all these changes to the prefab itself so that all of the other uh, checkpoints have this set up also. Okay, so what sound effect do I want to play this is where uh, I'll drag my desired sound in. So find the audio clip um, property here. And I'm just going to drag my checkpoint sound into that. And right off the bat, you'll notice there's a play on awake setting here. What this means is as soon as I start the game, that sound will play. I don't want that to work this way, but it's a good way to test if things are sort of basically working. So if I run the game, I'd expect to hear the sound effect right away. And I did, so that's a good sign. If I didn't, then I'd want to stop and figure out what's going wrong before I go any further. Uh, Alright, so I don't want it to play as soon as the game starts, so I'll uncheck Play on Awake. I don't really want it to loop or any of this other stuff, so I'm just going to leave those settings as they are. And uh, now, when I run the game, the sound effect won't automatically play. So I'm going to have to instead write some code to tell it when to play. So let's go to our checkpoint script. I'll double click it to open it in Visual Studio. So here inside of our checkpoint script, we need to figure out where in the code we need to tell the game to play the new sound effect that we set up. And that should be the moment when the player enters the checkpoint's hitbox, essentially. It's trigger. So we can look inside of the onTriggerEnter2D function here. And when inside we have this if statement that's saying, you know, it's checking whether or not the player is the thing that hit the checkpoint. And if it is, uh, we are setting the current checkpoint, and this is where we're going to also want to play our sound effect. So let's go ahead and, and write some code to do that. Now, when I'm trying to make something happen in code, a lot of times what I'll do is go to the editor and see if I can find the thing that I'm interested in. So in this case, the thing I want to, that I want to change in code has to do with this audio source, and this is a component on my checkpoint. So that's a good indication that I'm going to need to get a reference to this audio source so that I can play its audio clip, which would be this checkpoint sound. And to do that, we can follow um, you know, the patterns we've already been using. So essentially what I'll do is go to the top of my checkpoint script, and I'm going to make a private, um, a private field of the type audio source, a lot like what I've done here with Sprite Render. So we'll just say private uh, audio source, and then I need to name it, and I'm just going to name it audio source with a lowercase a. And so the capital A audio source is the name of the class audio source, and then the lowercase a audio source is my particular instance of an audio source that's attached to this particular checkpoint game object. Alright, so remember 
Following this pattern, first you declare a variable of the type of the component that you need, and then inside of start, you need to initialize that variable. So again, just like what we're doing with the sprite renderer, we're going to say audio source with the lowercase uh, a equals get component, and then inside of the angle brackets here, you type type of component you're looking for and it'll be audio source and so we're going to search this game object for a component of the type audio source and store it into this variable we created that's named audio source and so now that I've done that I can do stuff to this audio source variable and I won't get that null reference exception there's actually going to be something plugged into this variable so let's go back to that spot in the code we identified as where we want to play the sound effect, which will be here inside of the on trigger enter. And so <clears throat> what I will do is I'll type the name of my audio source variable. So it's audio source with a lowercase a. And I'll hit period. And we can just kind of see the stuff that an audio source can do. Uh, this is a good way with IntelliSense to just kind of explore and figure out what you can actually do um, with the various components in code. Uh, in this case, the thing I'm looking for is just simply play. I want to play the audio clip um, and when the player touches the checkpoint. So we'll say audio source dot play, and we can see this takes a uh, if you want, you can give it a parameter of a delay, uh, but we want it to play right away. So we actually don't need any, we don't need to pass any arguments into the play function. We can just call audio source dot play. Now it's important to remember that this will only work if we have already uh, set up an audio clip for the checkpoint to play or for the audio source to play. So if you had forgotten and left this blank, that would cause us problems when we try to play it because there is no audio clip there. In this case, we have properly uh, set up an audio clip to play, and so we should be all right. All right, I need to go back to Visual Studio and save, because I think I forgot to do that. Remember, you can look for the little asterisk in the, uh, at the end of your file name to see whether or not you've saved. And in this case, I haven't, so let's double check uh, that we've saved, and then go back to Unity. And here we want to test this out so what I'm gonna do it's important to remember that this left hand checkpoint it doesn't have the audio source set up um, in fact if I run the game I'll probably get a null reference exception because this script is going to search its components for an audio source but there are none and that's gonna give us a null reference exception on this checkpoint, we actually have properly set up the audio source. So uh, rather than get that error, let's just see if we do get the error. I guess we'd only get it when I touch the checkpoint. There we go. You can see when I touched it, it tried to play a sound effect, but there is no audio source on this particular checkpoint, and it caused, uh, it caused this runtime exception to happen. So we need to fix that. Let's find the checkpoint that is set up properly. And remember, since this is a prefab, all I need to do is hit apply. And all of the changes that I've made on this particular instance of the prefab will be propagated out to all the other instances of that checkpoint prefab. In this case, it would just be this one. That's the only other one. So let's select this prefab. Uh, and I'll choose apply so that this audio source stuff gets pushed over there and let's just see how that works. So if I hit apply, now I can see there's a picture of a speaker on this one too. I can see that uh, play on awake is not checked. I can see checkpoint sound is plugged in and now they should both be uh, set up properly. Now if I run the game, I would expect these errors to go away. What you should double check is that your clear on play button in the console is pressed in. It's kind of hard to, uh, to, dis to notice the difference between clear on play enabled and, it, and then when it's turned off. You pretty much always want to make sure this is um, pressed in so that when you run the game, any old errors get cleared out and you don't get confused.
uh, and, and about why you're still getting an error that you thought you fixed. Um, so if you don't press this in and you run the game, your old errors will still be hanging out in the console. So make sure clear on play is selected and then run the game and the errors should clear away. And now if we touch a checkpoint, it should play. And it did. And there's the other one. But, oh, there's a bug. If I keep touching the same checkpoint over and over, it keeps playing the sound. And I actually only want to play the sound once a new checkpoint um, turns on for the first time. I don't want it to continue to keep beeping at me each time I touch its trigger. So, let's see if we can figure out how to set that up. Let's take a... Uh, let's take a look back in the checkpoint script, and I believe we have this is activated boolean here. So what we could do is when we check to see if the player is touching the checkpoint, before we do all this stuff, we could also make sure that the checkpoint is not already activated. So after the close parenthesis on compare tag player here so we're checking if it's the player then I'm going to say uh, I'm going to add another part to this condition so yes it's the player and also our is activated uh, boolean needs to be false so the exclamation point here means not so it's going to say the thing that touched our trigger has the player tag and is not activated. That is the condition that we want to test for. So both of these things would have to be uh, true in order for this code to get executed. So we'd have to be touching the player and we would have to not already be activated. Um, all right, so let's save that and assuming that I'm actually um, setting is activated properly it should only play the, ch the sound effect for the first time let's go test it in the game and double check that's actually the case so that worked and it seems to be working properly cool so now we have a sound effect and again you can use this pattern where you add an audio source, you add a an audio clip, it should probably be a WAV file format, you uncheck play on awake, and you get a reference to its audio source and code, and then type the play function, and that's all it takes to play a sound effect. So you can use that pattern on any other situation you want to sound like this to work. Um, it's also not uh, too difficult to extend this to figure out how you would set up background music or looping sounds. Background music would just be an empty game object, so I could um, create an empty game object in my scene here. I would right-click, create empty, I can call this background music, and I will add an audio source component to it. And assuming I had some sort of mp3 or .ogg uh, file, I could plug it in here. That would be the music I wanted to play. Uh, you would normally use those instead of a wave for a longer file, like a music file, because uh, otherwise, without you know, a wave is not compressed the same way as mp3 or .ogg, and um, it'll get to be a very large file size. So anyhow, you would plug in the, the file you wanted to play, and then you would just leave Play on Awake on, and you would check Loop. And then as soon as you started your game, the music would just start playing. So that's pretty easy. Uh, all right, so I think we will leave this video here. With this, you should understand how to add sound effects and music to your game.